what's the the first big case you, you worked on, like missing case? But when did you the Peter Tobin thing come about? The first big one for me, because it won't because once I brought I'll try and explain this. So once I brought sonar into the mm -hmm. UK. I met a guy called Mark Harrison, uh, Mark Harrison MBE. He was the National Police Search Advisor. He was a great guy, and he wanted to see this kit. So he started coming out with us on training exercise with, after I brought it back from America in 1999. And Mark said, I'm going to put you on the expert advisor's database because we need this kit, and you know your stuff. You're the only person who can use this kit in the UK. And I said, yeah, fine, Mark. And obviously, there was a charge for that. So I got put on the database. And it was in them days, it was the National Crime Faculty, and then it became the National Crime and Operations Faculty, now the National Crime Agency. And um, Mark, the Nishi, called me in to search for Alison McGarrigal in the Clyde in Scotland. And I confirmed that the wheelie bin she had been dismembered in was not in the Clyde. It wasn't there. Eventually it was found by fishermen, on, and it was hauled up in fishing nets on land. Um, but... That was a big case, and then Mark started be calling me in all around the UK. But at the same time, I was looking at a thing called ground penetrating radar to look for buried bodies. When I was a kid, I forgot to mention that my dad taught me to find stuff. So he would tell me, he'd walk along, my dad would be picking coins up. He said, Keep your eyes open, son, you'll miss it. And we'd go to the woods and look for depressions where mines had, you know, old, old mines had been filled in. And I, I could find stuff, and I had this natural ability to find things. And that's where it sort of came on all these years later, really. And I, I, I will find anything, you know. And uh, we use a range of metal detectors. We use all sorts of technology. But ground radar. So I developed this, not developed, I got this ground radar. And knew him, Mark. Mark rang me one day. He said, I've got a very confident, confidential case for you to work on. It's a guy called Tobin. I'm going to send you the file encrypted. It's uh, it, it's an active, we're in a hurry on this one. It, within two weeks, we're going to search this house. A Tobin's been arrested, so he attempted to murder two children down his South Sea. As you know, Tobin was vile. And then he murdered Angelica Kluke in the Glasgow. Scottish church, that's yeah. it. And, and he lived in Bathgate. Now, when he got convicted of that, they then started looking at his background because there used to be a rapist going around Scotland called Bible John around Glasgow, but they could never sort of pin it on him. So then they looked at Bathgate where Tobin lived and they realised that Vicky Hamilton, who went missing 15 years earlier, lived just around the corner from Tobin. So Mark, Mark rang me up and said, you are going to conduct the full, police aren't going to do it, you are with your team. The police will provide forensics for you, but you are the one going to be searching this house. We're looking for a murder weapon, and we're looking for a body. So I went up there, and there was this big rockery in the back garden. Again, it's in the book, the pictures, and uh, there's a rockery in the back garden. And the neighbour, I, I, I always go and talk to the neighbours or talk to the with police permission because you get more information from the neighbour or who's like the local area, the kids tell me if there's any mine shafts or old wells in the woods they'll always tell you where they are we don't know the area and um he said yeah he said one day pete as i called him you know pete tobin yeah good old pete he was a guy's a serial killer didn't realize at the top of the garden he dug this huge hole and it went over two meters deep and he said what are you digging for australia pete and he said yeah i'm digging a sand pit for my my little one anyway a couple of days later it all got filled in he said, where's the hole? Where's the sand pit? Social services told me to fill it in. Never thought nothing more of it. And over the years, the rockery got bigger and bigger and bigger. And there's eventually a big mound. And that was it. So the first bit we focused on was the mound. And then I got the forensic archaeologist who will dig anything up. She um, took all the, um, the um, rockery away we then got the human remains dogs, the police. They then probed the ground because police dogs, you probe the ground first. You leave it for 30 seconds, 30 minutes, sorry, and then send the little dog in. And the dog, if he finds something, they, they're they trained, they put their nose to the ground, wag their tail, and then they get their ball. Some dogs will just stand still, but they vary. I've worked with Mandy Chapman, a good friend of mine in London, and she's a brilliant dog handler. And they train, uh, dog Carly, they train in different ways. Anyway, he indicated 
Then they sent that dog out. They don't normally do this, but they decided to leave it another half hour, probe again and bring another dog in. Dog indicated. So then I run the radar over and um, I, I saw this huge hole going down about two metres with what they call a hyperbola in it. It looked like something. It could have been, the, bear in mind, it could be looking for a dismembered body or a full body. And it was... Um, it was nothing. It was basically the archaeologists followed the hole all the way down that Tobin originally dug, but there was nothing there. I then searched the kitchen. The guards team got a call from Aidan in the loft, said, Pete, I found something. He said, I found a knife straight up in the loft. And, and what we do when we search, we strip all the lagging out. Everything comes out the loft. You search the gutters, you search everything using boroscopes. Anyway, there's this dagger and he's got this dagger and he's got forensic gloves on very carefully handling it's got the forensic tube put it in it they sent it off for dna analysis urgently and it came back as vicky Anderson's dna that was the murder weapon that convicted tobin of the murder and linked tobin to the murder of vicky Anderson. that was a great find for us because that that officially linked him Tobin was an evil, he was, evil he was a bastard. bastard. He was, man, yeah. he was. He draped a young Polish girl. The priest was a dirty uh, old fucking sex yeah. case, Father yep. Jerry. Yeah, but yep. he used to come into my school as well. Where I'm from, but like, near the apostle, oh, well. like, and Didn't. St. Pat's. I used to go to school Woodside, but like, <laughs> fucking see the see the bastards. Like Tobin, though, that I seen the video coming out of court and they kicked the. Photographer, and you could see the evilness even when he was dying in his deathbed. He wouldn't, oh, he was evil. saying he's done potentially 10 20 other murders. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think Tobin, um, you know, David Swindle, he was the chief superintendent on the job and he ran a big operation. And David talks about it a lot. And uh, it's just Tobin even attacked the media that day when he came out. I remember mm -hmm. he used to be filming, he went for the cameraman yeah. and everything. He was just vile, and he, he is responsible without doubt without doubt, and Mark Williams Thomas often speaks about this, he's looked at this case, and he's without doubt murdered many more. Without a doubt. Yeah. He's not just Fred and Rose West. This is, a, I, I know I never worked on that job, but this is just a huge, he's a huge one. How was that feeling for Vicky's family? Were they still alive, like, 15 years <coughs> later to then? Was it 15 years later? Yeah, it was 15 years later. I never, see, I never met the family. That was 1997, I ne 2007, sorry, 2007. I never met the family. Um, I met the, there's been documentaries, me talking on recently with the police. They've done a lot of documentaries on it. But we then went straight down to Portsmouth from there, his old house in Southsea, which he rented a room. So I had to do a full forensic search of that house. I, we cut the floorboards, went under his bedroom where he lived because he we knew he was a barrier, but there was no sign of Vicky. Now, while we were working in South Sea, and that there's a picture of me leaving the South Sea address and my forensic suit on in the book, and Lucy Cyburn, who's the forensic archaeologist who excavated um, Sarah Payne, brilliant forensic archaeologist, uh, and... They were working in Kent with Kent Police, along with being guided by them of the Strathclyde as well. And they went down there. They dug in the garden, Lucy did, and they found the bodies of two victims. That was Vicky Hamilton and Dinah McNicole. Now, Dinah went missing from Rygate Hill. She hitched a lift and she got in with the wrong guy one day. And Vicky Hamilton, they were both dismembered. They were both cut, cut in half. Um, I've seen the pictures and they still have their nail varnish on. It's horrendous. And um, Lucy, Lucy done the excavation, but it was just, he, he'd murdered Vicky and he'd buried her in Scotland and then he dug her up again without a doubt. And that's where she was in that hole. And then he moved a dress because he didn't want anyone to find her. And then he reburied her in, in, in Margate. So do you see the, the first hole you dug, do you feel Peter Tobin buried Vicky yeah, there? Without a doubt. Dug yep. her back up. Yep. Yep. Without and travelled up to Scotland and buried her there. No, to no, he travelled to Margate in Kent from Scotland because he was moving house. Uh -huh. He then sold his house there. He was then bought a new house in Margate. So he then brought Vicky with him. So undoubtedly that he built, buried Vicky first and then Dynamic Nicole. Do you think that's some sort of fetish, having them dead bodies around you, buried in Probably, your garden? I think he just didn't want, he didn't want to be exposed because people do their gardens and they weren't that deep underground, but they're encased in concrete. 
So, you know, and this is what, you know, you hear the, the police getting knocked for all sorts of stuff. That was a that was an incredible investigation they did, really was. And and a lot of them, you know, go on around the UK. You know, police are always getting beaten up for not doing good jobs. But I've worked on with some great detectives around the UK, some of the best. 